I'm going to be building this coffee table that doubles as blanket storage. So if you want to see how I do it, then stick around. I started off by cutting the four main pieces to make up a box because even though this is a coffee table, it's essentially just a decorated box. I used pocket holes to join these together and I drilled them on the front side of the wood uh, because I knew that I would be able to cover them up with trim. This way when I open the lid, nothing is visible. To make joining these pieces easier, I used two right angle fences clamped in place. Once I got one side attached, I repeated to the other, and then once that side was attached, I flipped it over and attached the fourth side. It was at this point I realized I should have applied edge banding before assembling the body together. So before moving forward, I went ahead and ironed some on the top. This way, whenever you open up the top, you won't see any of that, that plywood end grain. Then I cut and attached a bottom by first countersinking a few holes, then driving in some screws. And with the body of the box made, I started cutting up all of the trim to decorate it. And I learned my lesson, I edge banded all of these pieces before moving forward, which is of course a little bit tedious of a task. But thankfully, Audible is one of the sponsors of this video and I was able to listen to a book while doing this mindless task. I personally listened to a book by Patrick Rothfuss called The Slow Regard of Silent Things. And this is a shorter book in a bigger series that I've been listening to and really enjoying. Rothfuss reminds me a little bit of Stephen King that because he writes so in depth that it's so easy to get very lost in his characters and his world. If you're looking for a new series to start, then I definitely recommend this one. You can actually download the first book for free if you go to audible.com slash Wilkerdoos. But of course, Audible has 180,000 different titles to their library. So if this book doesn't appeal to you, then you can download a different one of your choice for free using the same link. With all of the edge banding done, I started applying it with glue and brad nails. Now keep in mind if you do want to replicate this project that the trim work is 100% customizable. Um, this is the pattern and design that I went with, but you can very easily change it up and, and create a completely different looking coffee table. Anything that I did to one side, I of course flipped it around and did to the other. And when it came time to apply a center strip, I used um, some spacer blocks as, uh, I guess, little kickstands, just to make aligning it a little easier. Next, I started making molding to add to the inside of all these compartments I created. And I did that by using some solid oak boards and my router table. I would first pass a board through my router in order to cut in the profile. Then I would take it over my table saw and cut the trim down to the depth that I needed it. Then I just repeated this over and over again until I had a bunch of strips cut. And typically when I'm making mitered cuts, I use the miter saw, but I found a 45 degree sled at Rockler. And so I decided to go ahead and give it a try on my table saw and I'm very happy with it. I did attach a temporary fence just to kind of give me more space to work with, but it was very easy to make repetitive links by simply drawing a pencil mark on the temporary fence and lining up my piece. I first dry fitted all of these before coming back and gluing and nailing them just to make sure that I was happy with the fit. And of course, if you don't have a router table or don't want to mess with making your own molding, you, you can either leave it off completely or just buy some off the shelf. I just really enjoy making my own trim for some reason. All right, on to attaching a lid. I'm personally going to be using some torsion hinges. However, the problem is, is they are supposed to go on three quarter inch material. And since I've added trim, it's now an inch and a half. So I needed to cut in a mortise for the hinge to sit in and still work. And I did this with my router. I did use the fence that comes with the router as a guide and then also two blocks clamped onto e either edge just so I knew exactly where to stop and start. And I must say it came out really good and really clean. And the reason I'm going through all the trouble to make these hinges work is because they keep their position to where they won't slam shut and smash fingers. So next I cut the lid. And once it was cut, I realized I needed to cut in another mortise on the lid part for the other portion of the hinge. So I just changed my fence position and the depth of the router bit 
and cut in a shallow mortise for the hinge to rest in. By cutting in these mortises, it'll make it so the back of the lid is not higher than the front. So that was kind of an easy part. The difficult part was trying to figure out how to hold this lid in place while I attached it. And thankfully this multi-stand that I typically use as an outfit table uh, really saved the day. <laughs> it acted as kind of a hand to hold the lid in place while I screwed it down. Then to cover up the edge on the lid, I cut some more trim from solid oak on the router table, then glued and nailed it into place. And I, I was actually planning on adding feet, but once I got to this point, I thought it looked pretty good without feet. So I just moved on to the finished and called it done. And here it is. I must say I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, now keep in mind, if you're wanting to build something like this, it's just a box that I decorated with some trim. I made it a little bit more complicated by making my own molding, but you could buy all the shelf molding, or I mean, you can completely customize the design of, of the way that it looks. And now for the hardware, I did go with these torsion hinges because I love the fact that they maintain their position. So I don't have to worry about smashed fingers, or I can just leave it open, fill and unfill, whatever it is I'm doing in there. Um, now you can find these at Rockler, who is of course a sponsor of my channel. So thanks Rockler for supporting what I do. Um, and I've left you links to the hinges plus everything else I've used during the, the course of the project in the description of the video. Um, also, if you want to build this exact coffee table, I put together a set of plans and that is also linked for you in the description. So of course I would love to hear what you think about my new coffee table. I'm going to grab some help, move it inside, and I think call it a day. So I hope you have a good week and I'll see you the next time I'm working on something.